Alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'ghfiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mazillala wa may yudlilhu fala hadiyala wa nashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la wa nashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Allahumma rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri wa hlul uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli Allahumma rabbana Atina min ladunka rahmatan wa hayi' lana min amrina rashada. Allahumma rabbi yasir wa la tu'asir wa tammin bil khayr. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka antal alimul hayr. Nabiul Karim wa nahnu ala dhalika min ash-shahidin amma ba'd Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah all praises and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us to be here today to perform the salatul jumu'ah and to listen to the khutbah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings upon the holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah his mercy upon each and every one of us to shower his guidance upon us to shower his forgiveness upon us and to shower his acceptance upon us i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once more to shower his rahmah his mercy upon me by giving me the permission and the ability to fulfill this responsibility in delivering the khutbah i seek allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy i seek allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower unto me the quality of tawakkal ala Allah, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa, the piety, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge, and the ability to fulfill this responsibility in delivering the khutbah. I put my tawakkal, I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient. Alhamdulillah and bi'ithnillah with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Last week we reminded ourselves on the favors and bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how it is a favor from Allah for us to have been chosen to be Muslim. We reminded ourselves on what a blessing it is to be a Muslim and why it is important to live a good Muslim life. Because if we don't live a good Muslim life, it means that we have not appreciated the favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be a Muslim. If we do not make the effort to live a good Muslim life, not just a good life, but a good Muslim life, then we would not have appreciated the favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of being a Muslim. Because Allah says it's a favor that he has bestowed upon us. 
to guide us towards iman, faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Faith. We reminded ourselves last week of the verse from the Holy Quran uh, in Surah Yasin, and I wanted to continue and remind myself and remind you of this Surah Yasin, the chapter that we read every day. We hear, we recite this verse almost every day. In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The verily it is Allah who gives light. It is Allah who gives light. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he records whatever we send ahead. Meaning while we are alive today, the good deeds that we do, the good deeds that we do. They are written in the records of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful. <laughs> when you commit a crime in the world today, it goes down on your record history, right? Yeah, it goes down. Some crimes you commit <laughs> anywhere in the world, you go, it comes up on the computers and the immigration desk. As you land in that country, <coughs> the immigration officer can tell exactly what's going on. Certain crimes will be recorded. And even though we have paid the penalty for that crime, and we have changed our entire life. It's still on the record. Right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so forgiving. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so kind to us that when we commit a sin, right, Brother Prasad? When we commit a sin, the angel records it. Okay? But when we do a good deed and we repent for that sin and we do such amal and such good deeds, it wipes out that sin and the angels knock it off the records. Subhanallah. See the mercy of Allah subhanahu Human beings are not like that, yeah? Human beings are not like that. You can do all the good in the world. You can do all the good in the world for someone. And the day you make a mistake, they will remember all your faults and all your sins. Uh -huh. Allah in His mercy is not like that. Actually, When a person, in hadith, the Prophet wasallam says, when a person commits a sin, when a person commits a sin, subhanAllah, when you point out the mercy of Allah, the mercy of Allah, the favors of Allah, the blessings of Allah, it is so deep. When a person commits a sin, the angel on the right shoulder tells the angel on the left shoulder, don't write it as yet. Wait and see if he does something good that can compensate for that sin. Allah. And then if it's written, Allah wipes out our sins with our good deeds. That is the mercy of Allah. So my brothers and sisters, we were reminding ourselves last week of how merciful Allah is in making us Muslims, in guiding us towards submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Iman. 
And then in this verse that we reminded ourselves of, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَقْتُبُ مَا قَدَّمُوا وَآثَارَهُمْ Allah says, and it is written down. We write down the good de deeds that you do that will go ahead of you, that will be in the archives and in your records for your blessings and your hereafter. مَا قَدَّمُوا وَآثَارَهُمْ And this is where we stopped last week. Where Allah says, and the good deeds that we have done, that when we die and we leave this world, those good deeds will continue to reap blessings for us. That will be the athar. That will be the impact. That will be the legacy that we have left by that, we, that will continue to earn and grow blessings for us. Look how bountiful, look how merciful Allah is. We do good deeds, it go ahead. We do some good deeds. As we mentioned last week, you build a mosque, you build a school, you teach people Quran, you spread the message of the Quran, you do dawah, you encourage people to come in the path of Allah. And then all, when you die and go, and we leave this world, the masjid that we built and people pray in that masjid, we get the blessings. The school that we built and people study Islam in that school, we die and go and we get the blessings. The people we give the Quran to and they read and they learn and they practice. We have died and we have gone ahead, but they continue reading, learning and practicing and we get the blessings. That's the athar that we have left back. What we have left back, Allah will keep writing that even though we have died. That's what Allah is saying here. وَنَقْتُبُ مَا قَدَّبُوا وَآثَارَهُمْ and we write down the good deeds you have done that go ahead. And we also write down, even though we die, we write down the good deeds that we have done that continue to make good deeds and blessings. Allah is so just. Allah is so merciful. Allah is so kind to us. You give dawah to a person. We die and go, the person practices Islam. Every good deed that that person does, build a masjid, build a school, help the poor, whatever good deed that person does, that person will get the blessings and we will also get the blessings without anyone being deprived. See the bounties of Allah? Yeah, it's the bounties of Allah, subhanAllah. That's why, my brothers and sisters, it is important and it is most important that we and we try to learn what we have to do as good Muslims. Life hereafter benefit us in this world and even after we die, we'll continue to bless it. So in the second khutbah, my brothers and sisters, we want to continue on this topic, on this importance, not too deep, but very simple. Very simple, inshallah. I know we live a life of trials. We live a life with a lot of test. We live a, we live a life with a lot of difficulties. But prophets face difficulties. When the prophet, peace be upon him, was asked, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was asked, who are the people who face the most problems in this world? What? Who are the people who face the most trials, trials, trials? Let's use the word trials. That's the right thing. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa said, the Anbiya. He said, the Prophets of Allah, they have gone through the most trials in this world. Could you imagine that? The prophets of Allah. And then those who come after them in status. So it's a trial. It's a test. But the bounties and favors of Allah are there for us. Sometimes these trials and these tests, my brothers and sisters, 
They help to keep us ala sirat al mustaqim. What? They help to keep us on the straight path. Because if we don't have some of these trials, we will be like mad people. We will spend haram, we will eat haram, we will go haram, we will talk haram. Our whole life will be haram. But sometimes these little trials, it keeps us on path. Because we are scared that we get more problems and more trials. So we want to pray more salah, we want to give more zakat, we want to give more sadaqah and charity, we want to make sure we do a hajj, we want to make sure we fast. So we want to do all the good deeds before we have more trials and tests. So the trials and tests sometimes keep us on the right path. And the trials and tests from the prophets were examples for us to learn from. Because it's not that they would have gone on the wrong path. Because you can be analyzing, well, why did the prophets have so many trials and tests? Why did the prophets have so many trials and tests? If they did not have trials and tests, and Auzubillah, does it mean they would have done wrong? No. Their trials and tests were examples for you and I to learn. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them as exemplars. To exemplify how you live when you go under troubles and problems and difficulties. Do you start to go on drugs? Do you start to drink alcohol? Do we start to shoot people and get mad and wild? No, we didn't see that in the lives of the prophets, peace be upon them. So they went through trials. So we could learn how they handle the trial. And how they put their trust in Allah. See, very simple. So in the second khutbah, bi'idhnallah, we'll continue, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us jannah without reckoning. Wa akhir da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alayhi. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Wala Akibatila Muttaqeen, Wassalatu Wassalamu Ala Rasulahi Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahabihi Ismaeen. Once more we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us, for blessing us to be here today to perform the Salat of Jummah and to listen to the khutbah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings upon the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. And again, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his mercy, his guidance, his forgiveness, and his acceptance upon us. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower Unto me the quality of tawakkal ala Allah, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa, the piety, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge, and the ability to fulfill this responsibility in delivering the khutbah. I put my tawakkal, I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient. So in continuing on the importance of, le- of doing such good deeds, doing such good deeds that will take us, that will go ahead of us, and doing such deeds that will remain that after we die, bi- bi- billions and billions of blessings will continue. We know it's a struggle. It's a test. But my brothers and sisters, When we look into the life of Prophet Nuh, alayhi salatu wassalam. Prophet Nuh, you know in English they call him Noah. Prophet Nuh, alayhi salatu wassalam, subhanallah. 
what Allah speaks about him in many, 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 many verses and many chapters of the Quran. Time does not permit us to go into the life of Prophet Nuh because he lived for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. So could you imagine having to talk about him hundreds and hundreds of years? He gave da'wah for hundreds of years. Yeah. Today some of us can't give da'wah for one day. We don't spend one hour of, of, of our time, of our money, of our knowledge to give da'wah. Prophet Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, if you go in the Torah, you go in the Bible, you go in the Psalms, you will see it written. Yeah. The Jews, the Christians, the nations before. He gave da'wah for hundreds of years. The Mufassirin and commentators of the Quran say, some say he, some says he lived for more than a thousand years. Different Narration, 1500, 1700, 1300. Some say that he gave dawah for 950 years. 50 years less a thousand years. How much? 50 years less 1000 years. And some say, well, he lived for 950 years. And he gave dawah for hundreds of years. But that doesn't matter. The message is the important thing. Don't get into the conflict and differences of opinion. That's what the other people did. We have a message to learn. And do you know what was, it, what was it? very interesting? <coughs> Even though he gave dawah for hundreds of years, only a few people accepted God. Only a few people believed in Allah. Some Mufassirin and commentators say that it was 50 people. Some say 70. Some say 72. Seven, some say 80. But they did not go above 80. Hundreds of years of dawah. But did not and was not able to convince more than 80 people to believe in God. Because Hidayah is in the hands of Allah. Remember the khutbah last week? It is a favor from Allah when Allah guides us to Iman. So those of us in continuation to the khutbah last week, I'm reminding myself and you. Those of us who are blessed with Iman, appreciate the favor from Allah. Because if Allah does not want to give us Hidayah, hundreds of years can go and we won't get it. And what I'm sharing with you is in the Bible, the Torah, and the Psalms. Mm -hmm. Very interesting life history of Prophet Noah. Very motivating. Do you know he was a 24-7 die? You know, when I, you know why I love to talk about dawah? Because you see, Al-Hikmat is all about dawah. Udwi la sabili rabbika bil hikmah. Chapter 16, verse 25, Allah says, Invite to the way of Allah with hikmah. Chapter 16, verse 125, Allah says, Invite to the way of Allah with hikmah. So I love dawah. Because our Prophet wasallam was sent as a da'i. Ya yuhan nabi inna arsalna ka shahida wa mubashira wa nadhira wa da'iyan ilallah. Allah says, and we sent you Muhammad as a da'i. That's why I love the topic of da'i. Because we can never finish doing da'wah. Never. And Prophet Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam, hundreds of years, but he never gave up. So listen to the point. What I'm saying here is we must not give up. Hundreds of years he gave dawah. And only 80 people 
Do you know what was also very interesting? Uh, some people say, some commented, they say he had four sons. Most authentic, he had three sons. Four, three, whatever. But he had one son that did not even believe. And in addition to that, his wife did not believe. You know, amongst the prophets, there were two prophets whose wives never believed in Allah. Prophet Lut and Prophet Noah. Nuh, alayhi salatu But did he whine? Did he cry? Did he frustrate himself because his son and his wife did not believe? No. Did he give up the mission of Dawah? Mm -mm. Did he give up the mission of spreading the message of Allah? No. He continued and he continued and he continued. Yeah. So it also tells us that you must not let your wife and children divert us from the remembrance of Allah. When he was building the ark, and you know it's a long story, so I'm going to cut here and there, in the line, inshallah. When he was building the ark, the ship, famous Noah's ark, son laughed at him, wife laughed at him, the people laughed at him. What foolishness are you doing? And what was very interesting, he did not build the ark by the sea. He built the ark in the middle of land on top of a mountain or highland, highland. So everybody were even double laughing at him. How are you going to take this ark to the ocean? You're going to ask all of us to carry it? The wind will blow it and they were making a fool out of him. And he said, Allah has ordered me to do this. And I do what Allah has ordered me to do. So people without spiritual insight don't understand the work of Allah. The wife laughed at him. But he did not go ahead, his wife misleading him and his son misleading him and tell him, give up, give up, give up. Nobody likes you. The people in his time, actually, the 80 people who accepted and believe in God, they were the poor people. Yeah. Go check the, the tafsir. They were the humble people. And the rich people used to laugh at him and said, it's a bunch of poor people who accept you and your God. Waste of time. We won't waste our time on that. So the rich laughed at him. The pompous and the proud ones laughed at him. Doesn't that happen today? Then people see you praying and you're God conscious and you're praying and reading Quran. They're like, what are you doing? That's what the people did to him. You're wasting your time. Nobody will follow. Nobody will listen. Nobody will learn. You're wasting your time. You know, we got 100,000 every year distribution of Quran. Some people is like, why you waste your time? But you know, the few people who call and people call and decide who we give. It is so motivating. Huh? We give hundreds and thousands of Quran. Prophet Noah only had 80 people who believed, and not even his wife and his son. But he did not let them frustrate him. He did not go off the wrong path because his wife and son mislead him and discouraged him. No! And we got to learn from the Prophet, peace be upon him. This is all, men this is all mentioned in the Quran. Chapters and chapters. And the scriptures before. Because Allah wanted us to learn. Allah wanted us to benefit. And Allah wants us not to get discouraged if we have children who are not in the right path. See, we need to continue what we have to do. So they laughed at him. And then Allah caused the rain to come. And the rain came. And what was interesting also, even underground, you know when you study geography and geology, you learn about the earth, how they got non-porous rocks, and you got porous rocks. Do they teach that in school here nowadays, Maha? Half is All right. I thought they only teach to make money in America. 
or nowadays. That's all people learn. So beneath the earth, you got porous and non-porous rocks. So some absorb and some don't. So the earth started opening in cracks all over and water started coming from underground also. Because as the rain came, the earth could have absorbed the, absorbed the water. So from underground, the water was coming. From overhead to the skies, the water was coming. And the place flooded and flooded and flooded and flooded. And cut a long story short, his son went up on the mountain and thought that the flood will not catch him there. He told his dad, he said, dad, I'm a smart guy, you know. As nowadays, kids tell their children, their parents, I'm a university graduate. So his son said, I can climb mountains and floods don't reach on top of mountains. So I don't need to come in your ark and believe in your God. But Allah caused the flood to cover the mountains. And boom, he was down. So we cannot overpower the power of Allah. That's why when we are reminded, my brothers and sisters, obey Allah. Follow the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Don't give up. Could you imagine? Think about something. What's the population of the world today? Latest statistic. Yeah. Well, technically, I think it's 7.7 .7 billion. So very soon it's going to be 8 billion. Could you imagine? Prophet Noah, alayhi salatu wasalam, if he had listened to his wife and his son, he would not have built the ark. He would not have taken the 80 people on, the, on his ship. He would not have taken the animals and the birds and everything on the ship. And today none of us would have been here. From 80 people. How much? Listen, this is no Nancy story. You know. The Bible, the Torah, the Psalms tell us this. From 80 people. Today in the world, you don't have 808,000 and 800,000 and 800 million. You have 8 billion almost from those 80 people. See the mercy of Allah? See the mercy of Allah? He did not allow the disbelievers and the people who were arrogant to frustrate him. He continued giving his message and his dawah and his dawah. Only 80 people? But today, look how many people came from the 80. Almost 8 billion in statistics. That's the mercy of Allah. That's the blessing from Allah. When Allah wants to bless us, nothing, nothing can stop the blessings of Allah. When Allah wants to bless us, nothing can stop the blessings of Allah. Another point, my brothers and sisters. Once upon a time, people... Like those people, the majority of people in the time of Musa, of Nuh salam, Prophet Nuh, they did not believe in God. Listen to this point very interesting, Bismillah. So from the thousands, because there were thousands of people in his time, huh? don't miss that point, there were thousands. Because there are great differences of how many people there, there were and how many years after Adam salam, Prophet Nuh came. Some say thousands, some say minimum 1,000. Could you imagine how many people were multiplied in that 1,000 years? Remember, they were not fake people like you and I, you know. They were people who made children. Nowadays, we make rubber children. Not real. You use rubber to save them, prevent them, and grow them up also. Those days, they used to make them. Could you imagine how many thousands they had? But only 80 accepted and believed in God. And in those days, they did not believe in God. And the majority worshipped idols. Follow. In those days, they did not believe in God. And the majority worshipped idols. 80 people believe in God. Nowadays... We have the opposite. You have over 80% of the world. Go study some statistics. Over 80% of the world now believes in God. In America, over 90% believes in God. The general population of the 7.7 .7 billion people, over 80% believes in God. And don't get caught up with the 
Bible statistics. Because you may see a statistics that gives you one, but that refers to those who believe that Jesus is God. You want to believe in those who believe in God, the supreme power, the creator. Nowadays, those days, majority believed not in God, but worship idols. Nowadays, the majority believes there is a God, but we don't worship idols. What do we worship? Nowadays, sad, yeah? I know some of you might be wondering why this guy is bad like that. Nowadays, people believe in God, the majority. They don't worship idols, but they worship wealth, property, and money. Oh, yeah. Once upon a time, you go into those countries and other places, every corner you will see an idol. Do you know that? Because people had their gods all over. So the gods is what they used to worship, idols. Today we worship properties, money, wealth. And we say we believe in God. I know this hurts, right? A lot of us, especially rich people, don't like to hear this. That's why the majority of all the people that believed in Noah were not rich. And I feel bad for rich people, but Allah knows best. You had to halal your wealth by giving the way that Allah and the Quran says to give. And how much they say to give, not to lie. How much it says to give. Give out of what Allah has given us. Not how much we want to give. Not how much we and our wives and our children say to give, but we give in proportion to what Allah has given us. And we give out of that as we pay taxes. You got to give based on how much you earn, otherwise Trump will lock you up even though he didn't pay his taxes. It's just the name of the game. But people think they're smart. The wife of Noah thought she was smart. The son of Prophet Noah thought he was smart. The wealthy people in those days thought they were smart. And what Allah did? He caused the flood to drown them all. But Allah built his people. He didn't need them. From 80 people, you have almost 8 billion people in the world today. 7.7 .7 billion. But the sad thing is, as we said, majority believe in God, but they worship money, wealth, and properties. And the Prophet ﷺ says, go and check Bukhari and Hadith. Do not, he told the Muslims, he said, do not do like the people before. They were destroyed because of hubbul mal. What is hubbul mal? Love for wealth. They were destroyed because of their love for wealth. Because if Allah wants to destroy us, he can bring buildings down. He can cause a flood to rise. Yeah. Allah has his way of working, my brothers and sisters. That's why you see... You know, that's why, that's one of the reasons why you see we get so very, very, very deep into da'wah. That's why we keep that, last week I mentioned to you about Quran. Our, you see, like Noah, alayhi salatu wasalam, and all the prophets, just give the message. At least majority of us, I mentioned to you, and I hope a few didn't feel offended. We can check how many properties we have. We can check how much money we got in the bank. We can check how many businesses we got. We can check how many offices we have. We can check how many beers we sell. Your brothers are. Some people can check and they tell you how much they make. Say, so that's where I make a million from. Million. But could you check how many Quran you distribute in the path of Allah? Could we check how many people we teach the Quran? Could we check how many Quran we give to non-Muslims? Could we check how much dawah we do and we distribute the Quran? That's why I try to encourage people every week. Every month, at least give. If we can't teach and preach the Quran, at least give the Quran out to people. And if you don't know people to give, sponsor the Quran so we could give it. That's a big demand. Looking at Nuh wasalam, life, he never gave up for hundreds of years. He spent hundreds of years spreading the message of Allah. What is it for a few of us to spend hundreds of dollars to spread the message of Allah? Eh? 
Here is a prophet who spent hundreds of years. What is it to spend hundreds of dollars when Allah has given to us thousands? That's why, you know, I, I always like to use the verse from the Quran, Surah Al-Maidah, chapter 67, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so you don't think that I talking about Quran is my opinion. Hear what Allah says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Ya ayyuha rasul, ballig ma unzila ilayka mir rabbik. Chapter 5, verse 67. وَإِلَّمْ تَفْعَلْ فَمَا بَلَقْتَ رِسَالَتَهُ Allah tells the Prophet wasallam, Spread this message of the Qur'an and if you do not spread the message of the Qur'an you have not fulfilled your message, your, the message as a messenger. And if we are the followers of the Prophet wasallam, the least we can do is just spread the message of the Qur'an. This was the life of the Prophets. This was the life of the prophets. So Allah has blessed us, my brothers and sisters, that Muslims are 1.67 billion people in the world. It's a blessing. We need to send and spread this message as much. When we ask you in Al-Hikmat, please donate 100 Quran. It's only $300. Shipping, posting, packaging. Please, every month, donate 100 Quran. Pledge to do. Some people pledge and they don't even pay their pledges. Do you know Al-Hikmat office? They call some people who pledge for the past year and they cannot pay their hundreds of dollars. But their business is running. Oh yeah, they're driving nice cars, nice businesses, millions they're making. I wonder if a flood comes and a fire comes and it destroy everything that we have. Then you go say, I like my office. I want to distribute a few Quran. I promised it last year before the flood come and destroy my business. You waiting for a flood? You waiting for a fire? We're waiting for disaster. I'm telling you real. There are people who pledged two years ago to give 100 Quran and 500 Quran and 1,000 Quran and have not even paid 1,000 cents. And they make millions. That's a reality, brother and sisters. So when I study the life of Nuh, alayhi salatu wasalam, and we look at the people who were destroyed and how they were destroyed, Allah caused these things for you and I to ponder. Allah caused these things for you and I to think. Because Allah can try us with the wealth as he tried the people in no time with their wealth and their arrogance. And they are not wanting to join in the path of Allah and obey Allah. And join with Nuh in the dawah. And even his wife and son did not. And I have to repeat that because a lot of people go the way their wives and children want. And then they go off the wrong path. And when it's time to die, the children leave them, the wives leave them, and they're like, oh, I am all alone. Huh? All alone. We don't pay heed. You know, speaking about the statistics of people, I want to share a little joke before we conclude the khutbah. I like my little joke. I know the khutbah is very serious. Some of you are probably getting upset now. What is he talking? How many beers and how many gas stations and how many buildings and how many Quran we distribute? Do you ever thought about why you have more women in the world and less men? 7.7 .7 billion people. So there's a joke here. Yeah? This is a joke. Sisters, do not feel offended. So the joke is, now after some hard talk, we've got to share a little joke. It's a reality though. So what happens when the angel of death, so you have more ladies in the world, more women, right, than men. Everybody knows that. So when the angel of death, and do you know what's the reason for that? When the angel of death goes to take the life of a wife, especially. Because most of the time, husbands die before. Do you know that? Eh? If you check the Hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, a time will come when one man will have to take care of eight, 50 women. Now, he did not mean 50 wives. Eh? He meant four wives, mother, sister, daughter-in-law, sister-in-law. Neighbors, why? All community poor guy may have to take care of. That will happen. Hadith, hadith, sign of death judgment. So why we have more women than men? Sounds very serious, but it's not a serious issue. When the angel of death goes to take the life of many women, they set them free. So the angel of death was asked, but why? Because some women have so much makeup that the angel of death cannot recognize them. So instead, the poor guy takes the husband life. When he makes a mission, he got an identification to go to this home and take a life. Because the women look fake. So when they get older now, 
and the makeup does not take anymore, then the angel gets the real person. So some, some comedians say maybe that's why you have more ladies in the world because the angel passed them straight, couldn't recognize the ID that he had originally. You laughing, huh? Yeah, but that's just a joke. When the angel of death ready first, you can have makeup, you can have wake up, you can have sleep up. He's going to take our lives. All right? And Allah is ready for us. Doesn't matter where we are, in high towers, low towers, big towers. He will take us. Okay, so what we got to do, let's do it when we have to do it. And as we conclude the khutbah, inshallah, I will look around to see if I see Kari Abdul Jalil and Maulana M. Charles from London. They were supposed to be here. I know they're in Margate and Miami Gardens because we wanted them to do a little touch of a little nod after the Salah because tomorrow we have this grand evening of Islamic songs by, organized by Al Hikmat. $10. Those of, may Allah bless all you brothers and sisters who have sponsored the 10, who have paid the $10 and am coming. Uh, those of you, there are some generous brothers and sisters who sponsored their tickets and bought extra tickets so that we could give out to other people. So what I want to tell you is that there should be a lot of, there should be some complimentary pass, complimentary pass, it's a yellow pass, at the Al-Hikmat Dawa table. Let's see the sisters. If you have any friends or relatives who you know would like to come and they cannot afford, please give it to them. Even if they can afford, motivate them. Yeah, motivate them. Give it to them. We got some free courtesy, some brothers and sisters who have sponsored tickets. Now, those of you who promised to sponsor tickets, don't stop sponsoring now, right? You fulfill your promise. Right, Brother Manju? Those of you who promised to sponsor tickets, you pay for it. But those are the tickets of you who are not coming, we're going to give to other people. Why? Because you're going to hear Kirat, Quran, salutation on the Prophet, Qasidas, Nats. And as I told you last week, the people, when the Prophet ﷺ entered Medina in the migration and the hijrah, they were singing Tala al Badru alayna. They welcomed him with nasheeds and poems. Very famous. He didn't have a problem with people singing it, as long as it were halal words. But why we need to encourage people into doing this? Because, you know, as the same hadith that says that a time will come when a man will have to take care of 50 women before the day of judgment, the same hadith says that a time will come when the world will be very much populated with dancing women and music. What? And do you know who caused that? Who caused that? Satan. When people dance, Satan go under their feet and tickle them a little bit. So even if they don't want to dance, their feet under the table dancing. Like Mr. Shaitan. Shaitan has promised to mislead people away from Allah. So these wild music you hear and crazy music you hear, there are little differences of opinion, classical, professional, the duff, things that does not cause you to go away from the remembrance of Allah. That's a different technicality. So I'm not getting into the fatwa of that. Not the, that the Sufis used to use and the, 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 the basic things like the duff and other things that people use. Not that. The wild thing you hear around, the dancing people pay two and three hundred dollars, to go and listen to these things. It is all shaitan who do that. Go check the hadith before you deny what I'm telling you. It is Satan who mislead people like that. So we want to encourage people, come listen. Quran, hadith, salutation on the Prophet ﷺ, praising Allah, sending the root and salam on the Prophet ﷺ. So tomorrow evening we have a grand, we suppose there are four, five hundred people coming tomorrow evening. And that's why I'm saying those of you who have sponsored tickets, Allah bless you. So we have a few complimentary pass. You have friends and relatives. Motivate them. Give it to them. Let them come. They listen to Quran and Hadith. You get the blessing. That will be da'wah. That will be da'wah, inshallah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Alameen. Ya Allah. Ya Rahman. Rahmin. Ya Allah. We thank thee for all the favors and bounties you have bestowed upon us. Ya Allah. We ask thee, Allah, to send your peace and blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu And we ask thee, Allah, to give us all the good in this world and the good in the hereafter. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasanata wa fil akhirati hasanata wa kina abba abba na. Inna allahumma laikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi. 
يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى ال محمد بعدد من صلى وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى ال محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى كل ملائكتك المقربين وعلى عباد الله الصالحين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين عباد الله ان الله يعمر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله تعالى اعلى واولى وعز وجل وهم اكبر الله اكبر اقيموا الصلاه